Welcome on this fourth Sunday of Easter. This day is typically known as Shepherd Sunday, and I will tell you a little bit more about that later on to why this is called Shepherd Sunday. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and uh, as Gary said, there are a number of things that are going on. Uh, Next Sunday is Mother's Day, and I will be making some presentations next Sunday for Mother's Day. Not Mother's Day? Two weeks. Two weeks is Mother's Day. All right, that's right. I'm, I'm, I'm lost in a fog. It's, that's right. Is that right? Two weeks is Mother's Day? All right. Okay, Mother's Day is the 9th, isn't it? 13th. 13th. I don't know. Anyway, whenever, whenever we have Mother's Day, whatever day that is, I just, I just show up and preach, okay? Uh, whatever day that is, we will be having some special presentations made on, on that day. And I'll be telling you a little bit more about that next door when we have our lunch and when we get into some of the things that are coming up and what we're going to be doing. So, anyway, just, just follow the bulletins. Uh, I may not know what I'm doing, but I do want to do the bulletins, so just follow the bulletins. Okay, if you would, would you bow with me in prayer this morning? Lord, we are so grateful to be here on this day that you have created. We are so grateful for all that you have given each of us in our lives. And now as we worship here together on this Shepherd Sunday, may we feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as you speak to us and speak through each of us and help us to remember that this is the day that you have created. Let us each rejoice and be glad in it. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Please join in the affirmation of faith. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge his wicked and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. number of those and as I as I said to to Glenora there is no unimportant concerns in your life if it matters to you it matters to God so let's take a few moments to lift those things to God but also to lift up our thanksgiving and our praise for all that God really has given us and blessed us with in our lives let us pray Lord, you bring so much into our lives each day. Things sometimes that we take for granted, things that we sometimes are not even aware of, that you are a continual source of strength and hope and peace and love and joy. So this morning, as we gather here today to to worship you and during this time of communication with you as we pray together, And as we pray individually and and we talk with you and you listen and you speak with us in conversation, I just want to lift up each one who is here for whatever it is that lies on their heart today. Because we all have joys and we all have concerns in our lives. 
we have happiness about what you've done for us and, and the joys that our families and friends have accomplished. But Lord, we also have the, the concerns in our lives, physical concerns and, and emotional and spiritual concerns. So we just lift all those up today, Lord, that whatever it may be, lie on that one person's heart here today that they will have the strength through their faith and trust in you to come to you now and just say, Lord, I'm having a problem with this. I'm having a problem dealing with this. I'm having a problem understanding this. Lord, help me to accept and to understand it and to trust in you. But Lord, I also lift up all those who are not here with us. There are those who are traveling. There are those, Lord, who we haven't seen here for a long, long time and we don't know what the situation is with them. But Lord, we lift them up to your care anyway because we love them and we know that you love them. And we care about them because we know you care about them. <clears throat> and wherever they may be and whatever they may be doing, Lord, we pray that you will watch over them, that you will bless them, and that, Lord, if they are not receiving your word and your love here in this place, that they are receiving it in another way, from another place. But Lord, as, also, as always, we pray for those who are around the world. <clears throat> there are still many who are in dangerous and hostile places. We pray for all those who are traveling here and, and around the world. We pray for all of them, Lord, and we lift them up to you. And the names that we raised up to you and the hands that went up, Lord, those are special needs and concerns too. And as we celebrate with those who have joys, Lord, we also console with those who have concerns, as we know do you. But Lord, we have to be humble because we know that we're selfish. We're greedy. We want what we want. And Lord, a lot of times we lash out and we blame others. We blame you for the things that happen in our lives. And we say, Lord, why did this have to happen to me? Why did you let this happen? But yet we know that in times of good, Lord, when things are running well and things are working for us, very rarely do we say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. So Lord, as we come to you humbly, we pray that we can put our lives in your hands. Everything about them, our, our shortcomings, our joys, our weaknesses, our strengths, that we can put our entire lives in your hands and that you will take the mess that we bring to you, Lord, the mess that we make, and find meaning in all of it, find joy and peace and purpose in all of it, and use what we have. Even though some of the talents we have, Lord, may be diminished over the years, we still give them to you return them to you and ask us, ask you to bless them and use them. For all these things, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who taught each of us to pray as he taught his disciples to pray together, the prayer that we now share as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture readings this morning, first from the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Continuing our readings in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Before I begin, let me uh, encourage all of you to stay with us after worship today. We're going to talk about some really, I think some really exciting things we're going to be talking about that we're going to be trying to put together this summer to get going in the fall. And also you're going to, you're going to miss out on some good food if you don't stay. We've got taco salad, we've got lasagna, they've got uh, garlic bread and rolls and just all kinds of things that they've got over there. It's salad, so... Plan on, on staying and, and enjoying a good meal and then joining us for a good meeting as we share together about the future of what we're going to do. You know, it seems to me that today, no matter where I go or what I do, everyone is interested in one thing and they're interested in one thing only, and that's numbers. If I go to the grocery store, and I go through and make my purchase, <clears throat> whatever store it happens to be, whether it's Walmart or Crest or Homeland or wherever it happens to be, I go through and I write them my check. And the first thing they want to know is I've got one of their little cards, and I do. I've got those little plastic cards for everything. If you've got a Homeland card, if you've got a, have you got a Walmart card, have, have you got a Crest card, have you got this and that kind of card, well, I... They ring up the card, which automatically brings up my information anyway. Then I write them a check, and I give them the check. They take the check. They look at all the printed information on the front of the check and ask me if the information is correct. And I say, yes, it is. And then their next question is, can I see your driver's license, please? I said, why do you want to see that? Well, so we can prove that you are who you say you are. Well, okay, I guess they have to do that. That's numbers. But you know what? They do the same thing to me when I go through the bank. Now, the bank has already scanned my driver's license into their computer. So when I go through there and I give them the account number, my picture comes up. So they can see who they're dealing with. But they still have to have a number. Now we're back to numbers again, okay? Every year, we file state and federal income tax. At least we're supposed to. I do. Now talk about numbers, page after page after page of numbers. Then the 27 years I spent with the Oklahoma City Police Department, you want to talk about numbers? The police department revolves around numbers, big numbers, small numbers, greater numbers, lesser numbers. Everything is numbers, numbers, numbers. The numbers never seem to end. As I said, my bank knows me by my account number. My insurance agent, who I have had for over 40 years, knows me by my policy number. You know, we talk on the phone, and, and Mike knows me over the phone. But yet, when we get into things, he'll say, what's your policy number? 
I said, look it up on the computer. You've got it there in front of you. Numbers, numbers, numbers. When we, when we write out bills, OG&E, ONG, AT&T, Cox Cable, they all know me by my number. I'm a number. I'm a number. When we attend school, especially college, we are known, graded, and even graduated by our student ID numbers. And what about driving? We have to have a driver's license, don't we? And that has a number on it. <coughs> but you know what? So do our vehicles. Vehicle identification numbers in three different places. When Sally was in the hospital, they didn't call her by name. They went by patient number. First thing they did when they came into the room, she had this bracelet on with a number on it, and they would scan that bracelet with everything that they did. Any medication she got, no matter what they did, they scanned that number. You know, I guess as communities and the world expand and as large shopping malls and shopping centers replace the locally owned businesses, the mom and pop stores that we went to for years, I guess businesses, the, the numbers become the means for identifying people, I guess. And, and it's a part of reality, I guess, of modern life that we've all become numbers. We just don't know people the way that we used to know people. And so we're asked for our numbers, those digits that we have come to be identified with, and those numbers. In the marketplace of our economy and of our life, that seems to be our lot in life is to become a number. Now, I just don't want to believe that our human personality can be reduced down to a mathematical formula. There's nothing wrong with numbers. We have to have them. But we're people. We're each different. We're not numbers. We're not. We're people. I can remember when I didn't have to show my driver's license to cash a check or to write a check because they knew me in the store. The days when I grew up in northern Illinois of going downtown and going to buy meat at the meat market and going to the dairy to buy milk and ice cream and then going to the bakery to buy bread where everybody knew everybody in the neighborhood. Those days are gone. You know? And people didn't ask me for ID back then because people behind the counter knew me. They knew who I was. They knew my, my folks. I could, I could walk into a place, don't do this anymore without any cards. I could walk into a store and say, charge this, put it on my account. Then they put it on your account, you know? Here's another phrase that you haven't heard of in a long time and you probably never will again. You remember the phrase COD? Not happening anymore. You called somebody up and said, you go ahead and send me that, and when I get it, I'll send you the cash. You know what you're going to hear on the phone? Click. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But I guess that's the price that we pay for progress. But I don't think that being known by numbers can satisfy the human longing that we all have to be known and to be respected and to be loved as a person. Not as a number, but as a person. Because our numbers, no matter how many we have, and, and trust me, you, you all have more numbers than you think you do. If you actually sat down and started listing all the ways in which you are known by a number, it would, it would probably amaze you. There are more than you think. I just don't think that being known by number can satisfy that longing that we have. Because our numbers can't reveal what's in our hearts. Our hearts make us individuals. Our hearts make us different. Because in the heart is where we find love. There's no love in numbers. That's just a number that goes into a machine, a figure that goes into a machine. But when it comes to feelings, and it comes to heart, and it comes to emotion, then things change. Because as I said, our numbers can't reveal what's in our heart. Now, numbers may reveal facts about us and data about us, but they cannot reveal the true emotional identity of what people are made up of. 
So on this fourth Sunday of Easter, which as I said is traditionally known as Shepherd Sunday, we hear quite a different message in our gospel lesson today. Jesus tells us, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. Now folks, that is a great message personally in a time when we have become statistics in a computer. Because it tells me that I and you and all of us are personally known by the shepherd. We are known by God and not by a number. But we are known intimately because God knows us. He knows us by our character. He knows us by what's in our heart and our soul. And He knows us by name. I'm going to be preaching in a few weeks to this scripture when Jesus talks about knowing the number of hairs that are on your head. How many of us know how many hairs are on our head? All some of us know is that there's not as many today as there, as there was yesterday. But we don't know how many. But God does. You can't find that in a computer somewhere. You can't find that in a statistic somewhere. It's a great message because we're known. We're known by our name and our character. You know, and that's great. What a great message because we are known by God. In the, ver- now in the verses just before this text... Jesus said, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now, I want to take a moment and have you think about the sacrament of baptism. We just did this a few weeks ago on Easter Sunday. When a child is baptized, the parents present this child and they do so by stating the child's name And if it's a person, an older person who is baptized, they state their name as an adult. And they acknowledge it by stating their own name. And then following the prayers and the vows and the statements of faith that we do, uh, and receiving of the blessing of the water and the actual baptism by the pastor, the pastor also states their name and baptizes them. I, I baptize you by your name, and then I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And by mentioning the name of the person being baptized and naming the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, baptism becomes a personal thing, which is what it is. Baptism is not a number. Now, we report a number to the conference every year, whether it's five baptisms or three or ten or whatever we do, but that goes to the conference. In our records, it is by number because we have connected you personally to God through the Father, through the Son, and through the Holy Spirit. And we've done that publicly. When you're known personally and intimately by your name. You know, there's, a, there's another side to this too. When you're known by your name, by God, you can't hide behind your numbers anymore. We can hide behind our numbers. But we can't hide behind our numbers when we're personally known because what we do and what we say is a witness to what lies in our hearts. And if we are honest with ourselves, there are lots of times in our lives when we have failed to reflect a true witness to the name of God. But according to our text today, Jesus not only tells us that he knows us intimately and by name, but he also tells us that as the good shepherd, he would lay down his life for his sheep. Here we are encountering the true meaning of Easter. We find that we are not only known by name and known personally by name, but we're also known on the other side of the coin. God also knows us by our shortcomings and knows us by our failures and knows us by our weaknesses. Things that we would rather hide in the obscurity of our number identity someplace, but things that we can't hide when it comes to to knowing God because we are totally known by Jesus and when we're totally known by Jesus my friends there is nothing in our life that we can hide you can go into a closet you can turn off the lights you can go down in a storm cellar you can go wherever you want to go you can hide from man you can hide from the numbers but you cannot hide from God and what's most important more importantly than that 
We don't need to hide from God. God knows us. He knows what our shortcomings and our weaknesses are. Three times in our text this morning, Jesus tells us that as the good shepherd, he would lay down his life for his sheep. As I told the kids, folks, that's us that Jesus is talking about. That's you and that's me. Jesus isn't talking about four-legged sheep that wander off in a field and fall in a crevice. He's talking about us two-legged folks who walk around on earth. These are my sheep. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And I would lay down my life for each and every one of my sheep. Folks, that's being known personally. That's being known intimately. That's not just talking about Jesus or knowing about Jesus. That's knowing Jesus and Jesus knowing us. Now we've come to be personally known by Christ with all of our strengths and, and faults and because we may know the forgiving grace of God in our lives. And we're not only personally known by God, but in the midst of a society where we tend to be known only by numbers, we are also loved and forgiven by the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd has laid down His life for us that we might know God's redeeming grace. Therefore, let us pray that God's Spirit inspires us to strive to live our lives out to be a witness to who we are. And who are we? We are the sheep. We are children of God. We are those whom God knows all about. Knows our strengths, knows our weaknesses, knows our faults and our shortcomings, and loves us anyway. In our world today, I guess numbers are a necessary thing. In fact, the way society is now, I don't think we could function without numbers in our world anymore. Um, they've been attached to us. But as good as some numbers can be, they cannot bring us eternal life. They cannot bring us forgiveness of our sins, and they cannot reserve for us a place in heaven. But the Good Shepherd can. Your driver's license number, or your tax ID number, or your OG&E number, or whatever other kind of numbers you got, are not going to bring you that kind of that kind of peace. Not going to bring you that kind of satisfaction, that kind of guarantee. But through the grace and the goodness of God. We have eternal life, we have forgiveness of sins, and we have a place specifically reserved for us in heaven. How do I know that? Because Jesus said that. In my Father's house are many places, many rooms, many mansions. And I go there to prepare a place just for you. And then I will come and I will bring you to that special place where I am. There you also will be one day. That's a promise. That's just not some hope or some wish. Those are the words of Jesus in the Gospel of John. Don't be afraid. Because I have a place for you. I have forgiveness of sins for you. I have eternal life for you. I have a special place in heaven reserved just for you. And only a personal relationship with God through Christ can do that. Numbers can't do that. And that personal relationship can be yours today or if you've already if you already know Christ personally in your life then today you can rejoice in that fact and you can reaffirm and celebrate the relationship that you have with the living Christ through God Paul tells us as he told the Ephesians in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us and that redemption, that forgiveness, and that grace, and that peace, that place in heaven that's already reserved for you, you can accept today. Just by simply saying, Lord, I trust you. I believe in you. I trust you as the good shepherd who laid down his life personally for me. I trust you in that no matter where I go, if I follow you, you'll have me where I need to be. Praise God for the sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us. Unworthy as we are, God loves us that much. Lord, we are so grateful for your son as the good shepherd. 
leads and guides and directs each one of us in our lives. And we simply just have to open our hearts and say, Yes, Lord. I'll follow you, Lord. I'll do what you want me to do, Lord. I'll open my heart and open my soul and let you touch my heart through the Holy Spirit. For these things we ask and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Truly, truly a miracle when God took my life and saved my soul and made me whole. That's more than a miracle. That's God's miracle of love and grace. And what God has done for me, God will do for you. So I send you forth today as those whom God loves and cherishes in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.